Hey guys, welcome to the third part of the 5e8 project. In this video, we'll look at a choke used in fender amplifiers. A choke is an electrical component, an inductor used to block high frequency alternating current while passing lower frequency or direct current in the electrical circuit. A choke usually consists of a coil of insulated wire wound around an iron or magnetic core. Like all of the other components used in fender amplifiers, a choke is one of the most simple components to make and understand, at least on the practical level. If you check the 5e3 Tweed Deluxe schematic and zoom in on the filter circuit, you'll notice that there is no symbol for choke. Instead, a 5k ohm resistor is used. So you might ask, if we can get away with a cheap and simple resistor, why use a choke in the first place? The secret of a choke lies in its efficiency. If you look at the resistor, you'll notice that it's of a pretty high value. 5000 ohms of resistance. Now an equivalent choke's DC resistance value in fender amps is usually between 50 and 500 ohms, which is 10 times less in the worst case scenario. So the first obvious benefit of using a choke is low DC resistance, which means that the voltage drop of high voltage or B plus is going to be way lower than the drop over a resistor. Also a choke is a lot more effective at smoothing down the ripple from the power supply, so it makes the amp more quiet and it also takes part of the stress from the output transformer, making it more efficient in delivering a final tone to the speakers. If you would like to check the effects of choke versus a resistor visually on the oscilloscope, please check the video of a fellow YouTuber All American 5 Radio in the description. So the rectified high voltage from the two rectifiers goes to the standby switch at the first filter capacitor. After the switch, it reaches the second capacitor and our choke. The choke will smooth down the somewhat filtered current from the capacitor and with the help of the other two capacitors, it will supply the fully rectified and filtered B plus voltage to the screen grids of the output tubes and plates of the preamp tubes. A choke has three basic properties we're interested in. Inductance, DC resistance and the maximum current handling capability. Inductance is the most problematic one to calculate when you're building a custom choke. The precise calculations are so complex that in practice it's better to use a simplified approach to it. A full tutorial on how to calculate the choke the simple way will be available for Patreon supporters on my Patreon page. The inductance value of chokes used in fender amplifiers vary even within the units of the same model, but it's usually more or less standardized, around 4 henrys. The DC resistance is also not a critical value, but since we usually want a minimum voltage drop of our B+, it should be kept optimally low. The current rating of current handling capability of a choke is pretty straightforward to calculate. Since we know from the datasheet that we need a choke capable of handling 90 milliamps, we can calculate the thickness of wire needed to handle the current using a simple conservative formula. The thickness of wire in millimeters equals the square root of current multiplied by the constant of 0.65. So in our case it's 0.195 or 0.2 millimeters. If we look at the conversion chart for the American wire gauge standard, it would be a 32 gauge wire. I use plastic bobbins because they are way more convenient. Feed the wire through the heat shrink tubing and secure it with a piece of tape. I am using aluminum tape or masking tape. I'm using a Chinese hand coil winder with some additional wooden holders I've built for the spool of wire. For the freestyle hand feeding of the wire, I prefer winding by hand, since I have more control. 
The hand winder can go pretty fast since it has 1 to 8 winding ratio. So start slowly for the first few winds and then speed it up as you go. For the choke we are making it's not critical to have the coil perfectly machine wound, but still try to keep it neat and even as much as you can, so that you can fit the wire and the bobbin. Cut the press paper to the width of the bobbin and test fit it. Sand the ends of the enamel wire delicately and isolate the coil with the masking tape. Then strip a piece of stranded wire and wind the thin choke wire around it. It's time to solder the wires together. Once you have them soldered, check to see if you have continuity within the coil. Put a piece of wider heat shrink tubing over the soldered wires and heat it up. Isolate it with some more masking tape and add a final layer of press paper. Now take the E and I laminations and insert the core into the bobbin. Since there's a relatively high DC current passing through the choke, it needs to have an air gap, so that the core will not saturate. For this you can just use a thin piece of pressed paper between E and I laminations.
since the coil of wire is free inside the choke, it can vibrate and produce unwanted noises, so it's a good idea to pot it in wax or resin. I'm using beeswax, but resin is usually cleaner and simpler to do. Make sure to preheat the choke in the oven before dipping it in hot wax, otherwise it will be very difficult to clean the excess wax from the choke. Thanks for watching. In the next video we'll finish the cabinet and cover it in tweed. If you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you would like to see more projects and videos like this one in the future, please support me on Patreon. You can check my Patreon page in the link in the description. Thanks for watching.